So far, we've been kind of abstract, and I've been doing that on purpose, um, really to set the conceptual background of what metadata is and what it's for. But it's difficult, possibly impossible, I think, uh, and certainly frustrating to talk about metadata without actually looking at specifics. Um, it's all just too abstract otherwise. So allow me to introduce you to the Library of Congress subject headings. Now, in this course, I'm aiming for really broad, general interest. I'm trying to stay away from library-specific examples as much as possible, um, which is difficult for me because, of course, library-specific examples are our bread and butter in the field of information and library science. But in order to aim for broad, general interest, I'm trying to not lean heavily on library-specific examples. However, I just can't stay away from the Library of Congress subject headings because LCSH, as it's called, is kind of the granddaddy of metadata schemas. It's been around since 1898 and it's almost the prototype of a descriptive metadata scheme. The Library of Congress part of Library of Congress subject headings is pretty self-explanatory. This is a picture of the Library of Congress building in Washington, D.C., incidentally. Uh, LCSH was created by the Library of Congress, or a committee at the Library of Congress anyway, to catalog the books and other materials in the Library of Congress's collection. But why subject headings, I hear you ask? Uh, well, subject headings is a term in information and library science that is somewhat ironically one of several almost synonymous terms. Subject headings, index term, descriptor, all of these terms basically mean topic or subject. Now as an aside, the Library of Congress subject headings should not be confused with Library of Congress classification. Now, the Library of Congress, um, perhaps I'm being United States centric in saying this, but I don't really think so. The Library of Congress has had a huge influence on the way librarianship is done around the world, and Library of Congress subject headings and Library of Congress classification are widely used outside of the US. So probably you've come across Library of Congress classification before if you use libraries a lot. Uh, Library of Congress classification is the call number, gives us the call number on the spines of books, right, and on a shelf, of course, It'll often tell you on the shelf what the range of call numbers are. And those call numbers help you navigate through the stacks and through the physical space of a library so that you know what call numbers are in what aisles and help you find individual books on the shelf. That is a classification scheme but it is not the subject heading scheme, which is different. So I will not talk about the Library of Congress classification again. I just want to be clear that there's a distinction to be made here. Library of Congress subject headings are the data about the subject of a book that's on the copyright page of a book. Now, this is a part of the copyright page of this book, An Introduction to Metadata by Mirtha Baca, which is a really excellent book, by the way. And often in, on the copyright page, excuse me, of books, you get this, Library of Congress Cataloging and Publication Data where you get some bibliographic details, including the title, the author, etc. But you also get this. 
Subject headings, database management, metadata, World Wide Web, and information organization. Those four are subject headings, and they are, in fact, taken from the Library of Congress subject headings. Now, it's really difficult, maybe impossible, to identify all possible subjects that something could be about. Right? That gets us into philosophically fairly deep waters, and I won't get into that here. Um, but to its credit, the Library of Congress subject headings seems to understand that dilemma and is really huge. The LCSH provides a huge number of subject heading terms that you can choose to describe an object. It doesn't have to be a book. It could be anything with a subject. This five-volume set is the print version of the Library of Congress subject headings, and it's in really small font. Um, but still, the world is a big place. right? There are a lot of things that something could be about. Library of Congress subject headings attempts to be as comprehensive as possible, acknowledging that there are limitations to that because the world is a big place and it changes constantly. The Library of Congress subject headings does change over time. Uh, but the important point is that it provides a structure for expanding the available set of terms as needed. So LCSH is what's called a thesaurus, or a controlled vocabulary. A language, a natural language like English, Spanish, Mandarin, Hindi, what have you. All natural human languages have a vocabulary. Right? English, for example, absorbs words from other languages all the time. New words get created all the time. So the vocabulary in English is always growing. Now, other languages grow and evolve, too, of course. So imagine a dictionary, if you will. A dictionary is an attempt to freeze the vocabulary of a natural language and the meaning of all the words in that vocabulary right? at a particular point in time. Now, a dictionary is not a controlled vocabulary. It's just a snapshot of a language, right? A dictionary is not a controlled vocabulary because most dictionaries do not claim to be complete. They don't claim to have every definition of every word in a language. Right? A dictionary doesn't say, for example, these are all the words that exist in English, say, there are no other words that exist. Right? Dictionaries don't say that. Uh, but imagine a list of words that did make that claim. Right? This is a, an image of a page out of the Library of Congress subject headings. Right? Imagine a list of words that says, these are all the words that you can use. You cannot use any words that are not on this list. That's a controlled vocabulary. It's a way of establishing control over the vocabulary that gets used. And in the case of Library of Congress subject headings, it's a way of establishing control over the vocabulary that gets used to describe the subjects of things. Now, we're not talking about a thesaurus like Roger's thesaurus. Now, for those of you who are in not primarily English-speaking nations, Roger's thesaurus is probably the most common English language thesaurus. It's the kind of thing that every school kid had a copy of, at least when I was in school you know, 150 years ago. Uh, Roger's, like other thesauri, um, includes a list of words and relationships between words. 
Now, in the case of Roger's thesaurus, those relationships are synonyms and antonyms. These words mean the same as this word, and these words mean the opposite of this word, right? What's called synonymy and antonymy, right? Means the same, means the opposite. The Library of Congress subject headings is a thesaurus, and it also includes a list of words, and it also includes relationships between words, but not synonymy and antonymy. There are other types of relationships, and that's what we will look at next.